Okay, so I'm going to draw a, a graph of energy versus frequency for electrons. So let's do, do that now. So I put, put frequency here, and I put energy here. And we know by the equation E equals HF. Um, H is a constant, so it should look like a straight line like that. And then I'm going to put another uh, line here. And we'll call this um, the threshold frequency. Um, remember how I said, um, as we know, atoms are pretty uniform. There's not really much. They don't change. All atoms are basically the same thing. I'm going to draw, draw that a little bit better. Um, so here's my atom, and say here's my little electron floating off it. And these are all the same. Every single atom is the same, and every single electron is the same. And all the atoms need the same energy to bounce the electron off. And the, it's a very specific energy. So say this needs um, two joules of energy to bounce it off. At this point, the electrons will have that two joules, and this is called the work function, or it's called phi, the symbol phi here, or the work function, because that's the minimum energy um, at which um, electrons are emitted by the photoelectric effect. Because before then, remember, all of them they excite the electron, and then the electron de excites and emits the energy. But after the work function, the electron absorbs the energy and then bounces off and kind of just, you know, goes and does its thing. And then, um, so that's called the work function, and it's the, and then the frequency at which corresponds. With, well, work function is the energy value, so work function will maybe say equal to two joules, but the frequency will be the same frequency that will be equivalent to the two joules. It will be saying that say ten hertz of uh, the light of ten hertz has this two joules, so only light of ten hertz or higher will be able to cause a photoelectric effect. And that's the threshold frequency. And why is it significant? It goes back to the particulate night nature of physics and of um, light, sorry, and showing that's one photon interacting with one electron and all that kind of stuff. Um, so um, this is the total photo energy, and the photon energy must be greater than the work function for photoelectric emissions to occur. So um, must that must happen. Um, so. There we go, and then all this extra energy here, um, if you take another axis here, um, and put frequency again, and over here you can kind of draw another axis, and you can imagine this as the kinetic energy axis, with this starting at zero. So when the uh, photon has the, exactly the work function, it only just emits this electron, and basically the electron has no extra energy after it's left the atom. But um, because all its energy has become uh, been used in overcoming the attraction of the atom. But um, once it's got any extra energy it's got, it gets converted into kinetic energy. So you kind of have a new axis here, and I hope you can see that. Okay, so now we've done um, D and E. And now let's um, look at F. Explain why the maximum photoelectric energy is independent of intensity, uh, where, whereas the photoelectric current is proportional to intensity. So uh, in one aspect, uh, the intensity has no effect, and on the other aspect, intensity does. So I, I've, I discussed this a little bit earlier. Right? We said intensity um, does effect the um, uh, intensity does affect the current or the rate at which um, the electrons are emitted but does not affect the kinetic energy. And this is because remember we said it's one photon one electron. If you have more photons then the electrons are all going to have the same energy as how many electrons this electron gets all the energy of this one photon. So it doesn't matter how many photons you have because they interact one at a time. So if you have ten photons each electron is only going to have an energy of one photon still. So, and um, the photon's energy is only dependent on frequency. That's the only variable that changes the photon's energy. So that's why the kinetic energy, as you can see on this graph here, will not vary with intensity. But the current which is produced will. More photons mean more electrons are interacted with. So if you are over the um, photoelectric, uh, the, the work function or the threshold frequency, you will have more electrons jumping off just because you have more photons. It's really quite simple. It's very intuitive as well. So um, that's really interesting. So what happens is if you take, uh, say, a slab of um, zinc, and you start shining a light on it, uh, but say you shine low wavelength light first, so you shine radio or even visible light, um, like a light bulb, and what you'll notice is it you have no um, current produced at all. Your current will be zilch. And then you can make this light bulb as strong as you want. You can make it a 10,000 watt light bulb, and you'll still get zero electrons being emitted. But then as soon as you turn up the, um, the frequency, you'll go up and up and up, and it will be zero current all the way up to the threshold frequency, and suddenly your current will spike like that. You'll have, sorry, it'll just spike and stay up there. You'll have a huge one, because you've got this, this, this huge intensity. And then at this point when you change intensity, the current will fall up and down. 
changing the frequency at this point doesn't change the current anymore because it just means that they have higher energy. But so the intensity is a current and the uh, frequency is a kinetic energy of electrons and a emitted at all. And finally, um, we just got to kind of put this into a numerical equation which we can play with so that cameras like to do this so they can ask you questions and you can answer them. So we said um, the energy of a photon is equal to um, HF, right? So we said energy of photons is equal to HF. But what is this also equal to? We know that there's this work function which is the energy you require to escape um, the uh, atom's pull, basically. The work function is the energy an electron needs to escape an uh, atom's pull. So it's the energy an electron needs to be free. Uh, think of it as paying um, uh, paying the bail on a prisoner in jail. You pay the bail and the prisoner's free to go. But then, if you just set a prisoner out, out uh, and if he has no friends or no family, he's just going to be starving on the streets. So any extra money you give him, or any extra energy you give him, will be used in... Um, his luxuries and his survival and his prosperity. So everything else an electron has gets converted into kinetic energy. So you think of energy as a total money a prisoner you give a prisoner. He needs the minimum amount of a bail amount to escape jail, and everything else you give him adds to his enjoyment of life, his prosperity in life. And that's the kinetic energy. That's how photons give energy to electrons. It's the same thing. They have a minimum energy, and that energy is lost in escaping the electron, and everything else is kinetic energy. And that's where this equation. Sorry, this equation comes from, and you can rearrange this in many, many ways, and you know it's just a simple equation. So you could say um, the kinetic energy of an electron is equal to uh, the work function minus the total energy. Uh, sorry, that would be the total energy minus the work function, and that makes a lot of sense. Anything the work function minus however much work uh, work. Well, sorry, the total energy minus the, any, the amount you need to pay bail is however much energy you have left over for the electron's personal use, or conversion to kinetic energy. Um, one final point I'd like to raise is, uh, well actually a few more points. What happens to, when, uh, to the energy you give to the metal when it's below the uh, threshold frequency? Uh, very simple, it gets turned into thermal energy, um, turns into heat, because the electrons emit it again, so it turns into heat. And um, how do they measure how much kinetic energy an um, uh, electron has gained? I mean, it's really hard to see an electron going past, and you can't really use light gates or anything on it. So um, this is how. Uh, they set up a simple photoelectric circuit, like uh, like so. Um, so you're going to have... And you, they put a... They kind of put a electric chamber, uh, electric field chamber inside. So this is how it works. Uh, here we go. Volt... Yeah, receiving, transmitting, uh, and then adjustable PD here. So they kind of they make up they make this this charged field. So you kind of have electric field going on here. Make a negative charge here and have an ammeter here. And this is kind of how they test it out. So what they do is they sh take a they shine uh, ultraviolet light on on over here, and this will cause <coughs> electrons to be emitted. But then what happens to electrons as they move through electric field? Well, we all know that the kinetic energy, uh, they lose the kinetic energy and it's turned into potential energy. So the kinetic energy, uh, the change in the kinetic energy is equal to um, the uh, change in uh, potential energy. In this case, electrical, energy, uh, uh, poten electrical potential energy, which we know is just charge uh, times the volt uh, potential difference. Charge times voltage, because that's what the total um, potential energy they gain is. It's whatever the charge has, uh, plus however much um, potential difference it's moved across. Um, so uh, when you get, if you keep raising this potential difference, we'll get to a point where all the electrons no longer have enough energy, just not enough energy to reach past the whole thing. We'll get bounced off and repelled and go back in another direction. So um, if you keep raising the volt su subtly until the um, current flowing through the circuit is zero, you'll know that you'll have this perfect equilibrium where the total kinetic energy is equal to uh, the charge of electrons times the total voltage you have. And that's how they work out the total kinetic energy of, um, of um, the electrons coming off. And um, uh, another point is uh, if you... I talked about the kinetic energy of electrons have, but it's kind of important to realize that electrons don't all have the same kinetic energy. When you kind of um, look at the distribution, uh, they'll ha kind of have a uh, various range of ki uh, kinetic energies across. So if this is sorry, if this is the kinetic energy of uh, 
um, electrons total and then this is the uh, how numerous they are and that's because um electrons occupy very many different levels in uh, at, um, in an atom there will be outer electrons which are e very easy to release and then there will be inner electrons which have a much stronger f uh, force of attraction and basically um the outer most the easiest electron that to remove will be what will be defined as a work function the energy required to move any electrons from a um, metal at all but then there'll be more electrons and if you have if you keep increasing the frequency to higher amounts then they'll eventually have enough energy to remove these lower electrons as well and then you'll start getting um different amount will be if you have a different amount of work function for this one here well it's not really called a work function it's just for energy to release it we will obviously have different amounts of kinetic energy left over so um that, that, that again is just another explanation for uh, phenomena which occurs so hopefully you understand all this now and this is kind of this kind of is experimental evidence to conclusively prove Einstein's theory of um, uh, that uh, light is, is particles um, of photons um, discrete photon particles which interact in a one-on-one -on -one ratio rather than a continuous stream of energy. So that's all, uh, for, all for chapter 26.2 and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you. Please subscribe and visit my blog.